So welcome to part 5, SPSS. Um, I'm going to show you how to import your data from MorphoJ, how to run um, MANOVAs, make PCA diagrams, and do discriminant and cluster analysis. So the first thing we're going to do is open up Excel. And what you want to do is you want to open the file that you saved with your PC scores. I'll just find out which one this is. Um, and then it'll come with this, but just press finish. And so you can see we've got ID, that's our IDs. We've got all our classifiers. Uh, I've got the centroid sizes here and then all the principal component scores. So I've got a Another one, which is a little bit more simplified, that I'm just going to use for the example. And then I have species numbers here, which is something to add when you're going to discriminant analysis, because you need numbers rather than um, string variables. So just assign each of your species, or if you're grouping by something else, each of your groups a number, because that'll be really useful later. So then we're going to open up SPSS. new data set and then we'll go back to our data so select all the data but don't do the column names because otherwise it will think they're all string variables another thing is you will have a lot of principal component scores um, from your analysis but I normally only select the first 10 because as you'll have seen from um, the loadings on our eigenvalues that they contribute sorry they describe most of the, the variance so the others don't actually really show anything, and when you're copying into SPSS, if you have massive data sets, it can crash. So there's no need for any further than 10 principal components, really. So now we've got all of our data in there, but then you'll need to name your columns. So you go into variable view, and then I'll just copy them off here. So our ID, species. You also um, can't have spaces in your uh, variable names, otherwise it will come up with an error. So when you go back onto data view, you can see that all of our columns are now named. So now we can start doing some analysis. Um, the first sort of um, simple one to do is the MANOVA, so general linear model, multivariate, because we've got more than one, and then in your dependent variables, just put whatever you want to check if there's a significant um, difference in this variable between the groups, so I'll select all of them. And then in fixed factor, put your species, and then we want to compare between the groups, so we'll do a two-key post hoc. You want to get some stats results so we can actually see what's going on. Just have a look at that. So this is all just a prerequisite to the more complex analysis. So you can see here we've got our sample sizes. Um, then we've got our multivariate tests. So you're looking at this one, Wilkes Lambda. And if this is lower than 0 0.05, then you know that as a whole uh, there's a significant difference but if you want to look at each of them individually go down to species and then for which of these have the same um, low p-value you know that there is a significant difference between the species so you can see it's in most of them uh, centroid size and log centroid size pc1 3 4 5 etc so um what we can do now is the post hoc we did the multi comparisons now compares it between each group so you can see say uh, we've got we've got just three species here just to keep it simple so Boletai versus Calypto uh, is significant for centroid size um, etc so this can be quite useful but really you want to find out 
how significant each of these um, variables are. So for that, we will be doing a discriminant analysis. So um, I am going to go to Analyze, Classify, and then Discriminant. And then you exert the group numbers. So those are the ones that we had that we assigned to each of our species. So I'll go Species Number, Define Range, and then just one to three. And then you select everything you want to discriminate by. So we've got um, centroid sizes and then all our shape variables into the um, independence. And then we're going to use stepwise method. Um, then you can use box M. It's a good test to understand if you're following certain assumptions um, for the discriminant function analysis or not. Um, also use Fisher's coefficients, um, so the loading of the discriminant functions. Um, and then method. And then you're going to want to use the probability of f, uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.1. Uh, this means in each variable, the software is running a kind of ANOVA. And if the p-value for a certain variable is more than 0 0.05, um, and less than uh, 0 0.1 then it's retained, if not it's not considered. And it does this for all variables, so that's the stepwise process. Start with one, one variable, then the second, then the third and so on. And if it looks as if the f parameter is increasing, if it does not then you don't need to add more variables, so the discrimination is maximised. Okay, then we go on to classify. Um, so I normally pick uh, all groups equal, but if you have like, particularly different sample sizes, then you'll want to um, compute from group size. Um, and then within groups in the covariant matrix, which is generally fine if you have a big sample size, otherwise you can use separate groups. Then you can plot the combined groups. So we'll get a nice plot of discriminant function one up against discriminant function two. Um, and then in order to have the results, you want to do case-wise results, summary table, and I'll leave one out, classification. You can also choose to save um, your discriminant scores. Uh, these can be used simply to um, represent the discriminant function later on. So what I'm saying now is find the function to discriminate between these species categories based on the selection of variables you think is ad enough, adequate enough to discriminate between these groups. So in this case, we've included centroid size and the principal component scores. So it's going to load our results now. Okay, so This is the first thing that you really want to look at boxes test of equality. So generally you want this uh, to be uh, in, uh, insignificant, so that is, which is good, but even if it isn't, as long as your log determinants are pretty much equal, then you're okay. Um, so then you can see the um, stepwise statistics, what's happening. So the software has done each of these steps and it selected um, principal component three first. Um, so the software thinks that this is the most important variable. So these are the variables that were selected to be the discriminant function vectors. And it's showing you the steps it managed to do. You can see the more steps it's doing, um, the more the Wilk lambda is decreasing. Wilkes lambda, sorry, is just decreasing. So these are the variables that were not interested in the analysis, so it doesn't think they're important. And then these are the stats that you might think about putting in your final paper. Uh, you can see it's created two um, functions, which uh, no matter what amount of variables you do, it will only do two if you do three groups. And then you can see for the first function, 
it's contributing 85.6% of the variance, and then for the second, 14.4. So this table at the bottom is the part that people are generally bothered about. So ignore the original, just look at the cross-validated um, correct classification percentage. You can see that these are all very high. Um, sometimes you do it and you just have like something very low, like 30 or 40 or sometimes even zero. So this, this shows strong discrimination between the groups. And then you can also see in this plot here, that's represented here, there's quite, especially uh, group three, which is Calyptra, there is, it's completely separate from the other two clusters. And even though there is overlap between clusters one and two, which is below a time maternal assay, there is definitely some discrimination between them. So that matches up with these results. So you would record these in your paper. So you can kind of choose what you want to do with discriminant analysis, and you can kind of do it as an experimental approach if you like. So um, I'm going to show you now discriminant analysis. But this time, I'm going to include some other variables. So let's find this. Okay, so here I have just normal classical caliper based measurements for each of those. So I'm just going to copy them and add them to our data. You can also see that the, we saved the discriminant scores there, which could be useful later. So now we also need to name all of these. Okay, so now that I've put those in, we can include them in the same analysis and see if any of them are really contributing to the distinction between the groups. So, up to this big component four, and then put in all of these. Now you can see there that the box term is unfortunately significant. But there doesn't seem to be a mass map difference between the log determinants, so that's okay. You can see on the stepwise, it still thinks that principal component three is the most important, but now it has head length and eye diameter as um, the next most important after that. So it'll be interesting to see how it has discriminated based on that. So if we go to the bottom, um, there's actually higher distinction than before. Um, which is interesting. Uh, you can see that groups one and two, which is below a time of tonic assay, are much more separated than the where there's less overlap. So this suggests that principal component three, head length and eye diameter, are really important distinctive features. Um, something else you can do is if you have unknown, um, something that's got unknown to unknown species or unknown location or something like that, you could use this to predict where it will be. So if I just, for example, just get a couple of these and make them unknowns, we can then see if the discriminant um, analysis puts them in the right groups. So press OK. Now we've got that table just before, which is here. It will have those unknowns. And it's predicted that one to go in group two, that one to go in group one. It's predicted all of those to go in um, group three. So if we go to the bottom, 
it has here ungrouped cases and it predicted 20% uh, of them to go in one, 20% um, to go to group two and 60% to go to three. So this can be a really useful way of um, trying to find out what any of these um, species actually are, what their real identity is. Um, lastly, now that we know what the important um, grouping cluster, we can have a look at how many clusters it thinks there are. So if I go in the cat categorical variables, I put first three principal environments, and then I'm also going to put head length and eye diameter because they seem to be pretty important. Sorry, that one. And then you can pick either of these. Get some pivot tables, and we can create a variable for that as well. And then we can see how many clusters it thinks there are. So it thinks there's three clusters. And then if we go more deep on this, oops, so we're a model viewer now, you can see the sizes of each cluster as a percentage as well. We can also view the predictor important. So this is going to say what it thinks is most important. So it thinks, same as the discriminant analysis, the principal component three is the most important, and then head length, and then eye diameter. So this is quite important because it's saying the three clusters, which are up to the same thing, and we can see that's likely species, but we can actually find that out because we created the cluster membership variable. So if we, we just do something like a histogram and then we colour by um, species. Sorry, we, uh, the histogram is of species, but then we get cluster membership number there. And you can see that actually these clusters are not clustering by species, which is quite unexpected really but this is a good way of checking it because you would assume that it clustered fully by species and it actually hasn't so it must be clustering by something else um, quite often it can be that it's clustering by standard length so if I was to get standard length and then try it with that membership you can see that it does seem to be clustering by standard length because most of the smaller fish are going into that purple cluster three and most of the smaller, sorry, most of the larger are going into that green cluster.